Well, for our next talk, we have Shafika here to talk about hotkey detection with Apache Beam. Everyone give a round of applause. All right, so today we'll be going through hotkey detection and handling in Apache Beam pipelines, although this will be a bit more focused on the execution runner of Dataflow, but underlying concepts are similar to across different execution runners. And yeah, this is me, Shavi Iqbal, and uh, my colleague, Ikena Okolo. We both are engineers at Google, and we work with PubSub and Dataflow. So he will be joining us for the Q&A. All right, so this is something that looks like, uh, like this is a very straightforward Gantt chart in which you can see that there are workers, and every worker, uh, maybe workers of different threads, they have different charts that are going on, and you can just see that there's like a red chart that is explicably like uh, quite long, and it's taking almost a double time that, uh, than the other charts. There's an orange one as well, but it's not as problematic than the red one. So what we will try to do, we'll try to push it back by the end of these slides to more or less like this, so that by the end it's still jagged, but at least it's uh, a bit more parallel and it's not taking as much time as the previous one. Uh, yeah, so I, I will also mention some of the things about stragglers because that is one of the main causes where we can see that there are hotkeys. So in the, uh, this is like a pretty straightforward can chart in which you can see that there are certain shards or work items that take a lot more time than the other ones. So basically a straggler would be where a shard is taking more time than the other shards and it's uh, it's extremely like, uh, it's taking, yeah, basically it's taking just more time than the other ones and the, the other uh, workers are sitting idle there and it can cost you in terms of time and money as well because since there are idle workers running in there, so you, uh, you end up spending a bit more time and effort. Uh, and yeah, so this is something that we will try to do uh, where th there are still some white spaces, but still uh, it's more parallel than the other one. And this is pretty much the hello world of Beam where you can see that uh, it's reading from Shakespeare uh, corpus and then it's reading uh, b based on every word and it's just uh, applying a filter and then there is an aggregate function and then it's writing back it so, uh, back to the file somewhere. So the purpose of explaining this worker example was that there are basically two functions. One is in blue and the other one is in green. So the blue ones are the basic shards that can be paralyzed. These are the work items that can be paralyzed on different work items. And then there's a basic aggregation function that happens when all the, there were, there's a shuffle stage and all the elements according to every key is aggregated. So basically the two primitives of Apache Beam and or, or we can just say that the map produce paradigm in which there's a pardo and group by key. Pardo would be a parallel function that uh, uh, takes an input and then it produces one or more outputs, or zero one or more outputs, and it can filter inputs. It's basically like the map of map produce uh, paradigm, and then the group by key would be the shuffle stage of that paradigm. So it's pretty much similar, but I just wanted to go through these because we will be going through these uh, primitives in the next slides as well. And yeah, group by key is similar that uh, you are getting key value pairs and then with every key you are associating all the values that are associated with it. And it's just like an, uh, ev with every key there's an iterable of values that are associated with it. So group by key is like shuffle in which you associate all the keys with the key. I hope I'm not going too fast. <laughs> all right, uh, yeah, let's skip this one. Okay, so uh, this is the same Gantt chart that we go, uh, went through, and this basically explains Pardo, how parallelizable work, uh, shards are working across different workers. And uh, yeah, th by the end, it's a bit more jagged. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So what exactly is a straggler? And uh, here you can see that a straggler is something that takes more time than the other shards, and uh, it's like a work, it's like a shard that is taking extremely more time, almost a double than the other ones. And in a perfect world, in a perfect parallelizable pipeline, we, what we would try to do is, we would try to parallelize it. And this is something that you can also calculate that uh, what's the remaining amount of the work that is there. And then you can uh, divide it by the amount time that you have. And then you can pretty much guess that how much longer it will take to finish this paralyze, parallelizable pipeline. And if there is a shard that takes more time than the other ones, then it will uh, cost you in t a lot of time and money as well. So by uh, Amdahl's law, it basically means that the uh, uh, speed up that you get from paralyzing your pipeline is heavily dependent on the serializable work that you do. Uh, basically, the more serializable work that you have in your pipeline, uh, it, it, you won't be able to paralyze it because at the end of the day, the scalability will drop. For example, 
if you have, uh, for example, if uh, there's one worker that is spending like 100% of the C CPU utilization on, and the rest of them are idle, even if you end up adding more workers on top of it, it's still not going to scale because uh, like uh, it's still taking that serializable time. So the more serializable work that you have that cannot be paralyzed, more time you will end up spending. So at the end of the day, it becomes a bottleneck when it comes to scalability. Sorry, uh, what? Serial fraction would be the amount, like the serial work that you have. So for example, if a worker is doing a, a serializable work, that, that cannot be paralyzed. So that would be like more, more serializable fraction that you have, then it will take more time. Um, it, be, it, it depends on the work item that you have or the time it takes to accomplish that. It will be positive because the, the, if you are processing a shard, then it will definitely be positive. Greater than one, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the reason for these stragglers would be uneven partitioning. And the first one is something that we will be also looking into. For example, uh, in which there are more values that are associated with a certain key. And that uh, can become a possible reason for stragglers. Uh, for example, like if you, uh, there's an example here that if you are processing the English dictionary and then you have 26 workers for the entire English dictionary, where you, every worker will be processing the uh, l certain letters. For example, worker one will be processing all the letter, uh, words that start with A, and then worker B will be processing all the words that start with B. Then this will eventually become a bottleneck because you are not partitioning it correctly. Uh, the thing is, ev almost ev there's a thing, almost every si sixth letter starts with T. So your pipeline won't scale up more than six times anyway. And the worker that is processing the letter T will definitely become a bottleneck eventually. And then the next ones are, so it's not always that the partitioning scheme is the problem for stragglers. It can be that the uneven complexity, for example, there are some per record operations that are taking much more time. Uh, I have seen some cases with the customers where they were like, they were loading jar files on every rec record operations and that became a bottleneck as well. Sometimes it's uneven resources, bad machines, that you are doing some RPC calls to external machines. And sometimes the thing is, some RPC calls are hitting slow instances and some are hitting fast instances. Sometimes maybe it's like the hardware issue. So the, the, uh, the solutions for these ones will vary a lot. But the one that uh, we are looking into will be uneven partitioning, where there are more keys. Uh, uh, so, sorry, there are more values associated with a certain key. And then that worker becomes a bottleneck for us. Uh, okay. So yeah, this is something that we are looking into. What exactly are hotkeys? And a hotkey is a key with enough elements to negatively impact the pipeline performance. So I can give uh, an example for this. For example, there were three students who went to detention for in a school, and then there is a room full of plates of red, green, and blue. So those students have to sort all of these plates. But if you partition, if you just say that uh, each student will par uh, just sort these uh, red uh, plates or the one the student who will sort all the green plates and the so on and so forth, this can become a bottleneck because they're almost eighty percent of the plates are red. So uh, even though the other two students are free, uh, you are still spending a lot of time. They are waiting for the third student because he's still working on the red plates and. That's what happens in big data pipelines as well. It's like a global phenomena, uh, basically, that if there are more uh, values that are associated with a certain key, then that's definitely going to take more time. And the thing, is, uh, and also in Apache Beam pipelines, we are still running it on the same worker, possibly on the same thread as well. So that's going to take uh, much more time to be processed. And uh, our pipeline won't finish or won't be considered fin finish until that work item is done. So all the other work items will, uh, all the other workers will eventually be waiting for that one. Okay. So this is an example of the key value pairs, uh, basically in like a P collection where you can see that there are uh, almost one million records are associated with uh, that key one uh, in which it's the same key and then there are different values. But then uh, it's not it's heavily imbalanced. You can see that. And when they are going, uh, the, these three workers will be handling different keys. Definitely, worker one will be 
uh, uh, heavily uh, overutilized because it's handling the key one uh, key value pairs. And as you can see that the CPU utilization skyrocketed in key, uh, uh, worker one, while the other two workers are sitting idle there. And the problem with this is that if you have multi-stage pipelines or there are multiple jobs that are uh, like you have serialized after one another, the next job won't, won't start until this one is finished. So you will have to wait for all the for this worker one to finish its job for all the other ones. Uh, just a second. All right. Um, how to identify these hotkeys? So this is a very data flow catered uh, scenario in which there was this customer and they were looking into these hotkey scenario. Uh, you can see that under the monitoring and CPU utilizations that uh, there is like one or two workers that are operating almost at 100% of the CPU utilization while the other ones are just sitting idle at that time. So uh, this is something that uh, that can uh, identify, that you can identify if the CPU utilization of a particular worker is skyrocketing while the other workers are sitting idle. That can be the issue, that can be an identification for a hard key. Uh, so this is one of the simplest ways that you can identify if the job is impacted by hard keys or not. Uh, so yeah, this truly indicates that there is a possibility that the job is stuck due to relays. So what are the things that you can do on your end? There are different things that I have seen while uh, like the top 50 customers have been employing or like what you can do as well. So the first one would be uh, how to handle the uneven partitioning and uneven complexity. Uh, one thing that you can do is try to over split your uh, shards to enough so that they won't be a scenario of hotkey. But the thing is, it's it's a bit of problematic as well because if you shard it enough, uh, it might introduce more complexity. So it it heavily depends on you and your domain as well. If you know that okay, over splitting to this level would definitely solve the issue, that you can do it. But uh, sometimes uh, splitting too much can also uh, result in newer problems. So that's something that is still like uh, take with a grain of salt. The second one would be hand tuning, like uh, using data statistics, so, uh, using some statistical analysis that you can define if there's a hotkey or not. The thing with Apache Beam uh, pipelines is that there are a lot of matrices that are uh, that are evolved with Apache Beam pipeline. So with uh, using those metrics, you can identify based on certain key distributions or key frequencies if there is a hotkey. Uh, I think there are different methods to do that using maybe z-scores or thresholding algorithms that you can define. Uh, or you can take a subsample of that data if you are running a batch pipeline. Sometimes what people do is take a sample size of the data that they are going to read eventually. And then they try to run some statistical analysis on top of it to identify if there is going to be a hotkey or not. Of course, it's going to be a smaller data size, but it's enough to be loaded into the memory. And then if they, they can kind of predict. But these are still quite predictive methods that you can do. And based on data monitoring or based on the key partitioning as well or iterative optimizations. So the thing with iterative optimization is that once you have identified that if there's a hotkey, you can iteratively architect your pipelines in a way in which you can partition those particular keys. Uh, yeah, so other than that, if there are uneven resources, you can always just restart your uh, worker and hope that it was a transient issue and then there wouldn't be a hotkey again or that shard will be splitted in the next phase. Okay. There are some things that you can do uh, using Apache Beam pipelines uh, if you are facing hotkeys. The, so the first one would be to apply a pardo and transform to new key value pairs. Uh, this is the most common solution that uh, people also do. They try to re-key re their data in between. The next one can be auto sharding. And this is one example. For example, uh, if you haven't defined your own keys particularly, and after every group by key, uh, there are like uh, Apache Beam pipelines look into the you know, your user code to define what are the keys. And if you haven't defined it yourself, sometimes uh, like this can backfire. For example, there was this case when the customer had uh, two keys only because he was uh, auto sharding based on the number of uh, different device types that he had. And there were only two device types. So basically there were two workers that were uh, extremely overloaded. 
and he didn't define the key strategy for that. So what you can do, maybe you can auto shard and define a prefix uh, with every key, and then that can also help you define different partitioning scheme. And then the next one would be combined globally. Uh, this is something that you can Im employ if you don't, if you know that it the hotkey is not extremely hotkey, but still it's manageable. Uh, because this will still uh, be executed on the same worker nodes after right after group by key, but it still give you a, some sort of parallelism because right after group by key, you will be combining uh, data associated with every key. So this still helps not to overwhelm and it helps you to pre-aggregate your data and some of the results uh, prior to the final stage. So in the final stage, you are just combining all the data that came pre-aggregated through this combined node globally. And if you still, but the thing is it won't, uh, it wouldn't work with extremely hot keys. So there's another fine tuning that you can do with extremely hot keys. You can define this with hot key fan out uh, parameter. So this is a very common use case in distributed compute processing in uh, using combined with fan out in which you define this fan out parameter and it introduces a level of uh, parallelism prior to that actual step. So basically there will be some uh, pre-aggregation step that will be done before uh, the actual final stage. And with this, you can define the number of machines that should be doing that, uh, uh, that should be handling this pre-aggregation. So let me explain that with an example. Here you can see that there's a hotkey fan out example in which you have defined that it should be, there should be some pre-aggregation done and that pre-aggregation should be done on uh, this many workers. For example, there are two workers here. So you can define the factor that you want based on your own data and use case. And here you can see that the pre-aggregation is done on different machines and then the final stage is, uh, final aggregation is still done on the final node. So it still, it helps uh, with not overwhelming your resources. And at the same time, you can define the level of parallelism that you want as per your hotkeys. So you can define certain code that only runs for your hotkeys. And then if there is not a hotkey, then you don't have to run that. And uh, yeah, and this scenario can be employed in, for example, there's an example, if you are uh, partitioning number of followers on Twitter, and if you are just, uh, yeah, yeah, if your partitioning scheme is uh, the number of followers everyone have, definitely the people who have more number of followers, they, uh, those workers will be heavily uh, overused because uh, there are some celebrities who have a lot more uh, followers. So you can always uh, employ the scheme with hotkey fan out where you can define that if people have more than 1 million followers, then uh, do this partitioning in which they are, they are, the pre-aggregation would be done on different nodes and then do this aggregation later on so that only the hotkeys are handled in this way. And if you are using Dataflow, you can always opt for Dataflow shuffle as well so that you, don't, you are not using the persistent storage or you are not over-utilizing the memory and CPU of your VMs. You, get, uh, you, you are going to utilize that of Dataflow backend so that helps uh, in a lot of scenarios. Um, yeah, so th that's the thing with hotkeys. You can be, you you can try to predict it based on the monitoring if you have, or based on the domain knowledge. So there are different, or maybe iteratively you can try to combine it. Like in the previous slide where I mentioned that you can either do it predictively or you can do it proactively. So if you already know that there's a hotkey, you can reiterate your pipeline in a way to define this fan out parameter, and that's where you just optimize it. Okay, oh, sorry. So this is the CPU utilization that would work, uh, that would look like if uh, the hotkey is removed and you can see that all the workers are almost utilized or at the same rate. And it, there's not like a huge gap between the CPU utilization of different workers. So what we have discussed that uh, if there's a hotkey, what we will try to do, we will try to go from that to this. Uh, defining it into further shards and possibly introducing more parallelism into it. These are some common FAQs when it comes to hotkeys in Dataflow or Apache Beam pipelines. We can go through it since we have some time. Can we assign a more powerful machine to the worker that is processing the hotkey? So the thing, uh, yeah, sometimes people, what people try to do, they, ask, they try to auto scale. They say that we have auto scale, we have assigned high memory machine, we, we are doing this, but still there is a hotkey, so what should we do? The thing is, the uh, it's still running on the same machine on the same uh, thread as well. So even if 
uh, you are doing auto scaling, the other workers, the other uh, idle workers are still idle. So the n minus one workers will be sitting idle, and it's not going to help you anyway. And in the case of if all the workers run with powerful machines, the pipeline will finish quicker. Plus, it will be cheaper since most of them will be idle anyways. All right. Um, yeah, so I enable auto scale, but my job doesn't finish any faster. So this is the same thing. Even if you enable auto scale, uh, and there are there are more workers working on different shards, but still there there is certain shard that has huge number of hotkeys associated with it. So it's still gonna uh, be executed on the same worker anyway. So that won't really help you. And try to define your uh, partitioning schemes as well, and try to be a bit more predictive. For example. Uh, there are scenarios where people don't define it in their own code, and then when uh, after the group by key, it can backfire, like the one that we discussed before. So that that's something that you can try to get rid of. And just yeah, fix the root cause issue because try try to balance the data set because it, it won't help unless you try to balance it. So most of the times when we reach out to the top fifty customer, we are also telling them that they need to rekey or redistribute their data and look into more parallelism scheme that with a uh, hotkey fan out. Okay, I think that's more or less it. Uh, Ikena is joining us. I think this is the Q and A time. So if you have any questions, you can ask me.